Hello again viewers, hope you're all doing well. Thanks for watching all the Lanzarote and Fortaventura videos, I really really appreciate it. I know I've got a lot of people who've come on the channel who love Lanzarote and Fortaventura. I really enjoyed my trip going there. Seven days, five days in Lanzarote and two days in Fortaventura. I know you're desperate to ask me, Kevin, how much did it all cost? So I'm going to tell you how much the flights cost, how much the hotels cost, I'll let you know my opinions on each hotel that I stayed in, the good and the bad. And also, watch till the end, I'll actually tell you how much money I spent on this trip, which is very unusual, because I usually don't track it that well, but it just so happened, I almost spent every euro I had uh, on me when I went there, so I can tell you how much I spent. It also gives you a wee bit of an idea of the running costs of this YouTube channel um, for a week. You might be surprised, Good or bad, I'm not sure. Watch till the end, I'll let you know. Um, thanks for your support. I can't do the videos without you guys. If you're watching videos, especially to the end, it helps the channel so much. And I'd really, really appreciate it. Now, I was struggling to find a thumbnail because I couldn't find any euros. I don't think any euros left. So what I'm doing is I'm just holding up my passport and then I'll put it in the thumbnail and you wonder, where's it going next? I'll tell you about that in a wee minute. <laughs> I need to get the reading glasses on, bear with me. Okay, so there's the glasses on. And we'll discuss how much it all cost. I've got my wee notepad here as well. So, plan is, middle of January, end of January, everything going okay, I might be away somewhere else. Possibly Tenerife, possibly somewhere else, we'll wait and see. But I'm looking for new ideas for the summer, from May onwards, especially maybe April. New destinations, leave a wee comment below. February, I've got no idea if I'm going to be away anywhere in February. I'm trying to avoid going back to the Canaries because I've done them all recently. But I'm trying to find somewhere quite hot. Now that's quite tricky. I have seen some very, very cheap flights to Dubai in February. I need to go via places but I can get very cheap flights. But I'm not convinced I'll be able to do good videos in Dubai. What do you think? The guys who have been to Dubai, let me know. Um, I'm just not sure it's going to suit what I do going there. We'll wait and see. And it's pretty expensive when you're there. But I, I'm thinking about it, viewers. We'll see. Anyway, let's get right into it. How much did it cost for seven days in Lanzarote and Fortaventura in high season in the Canary Islands? Flights out. First of all, a wee special mention to Elaine, who I met on the flight on the way out. Elaine is uh, my good friend Stephen's wife, who works for two. And uh, it was a wee surprise meeting you Elaine on the flight. Hope you're doing well. Lovely to meet you again. Flight out with Tui was £49. Absolute bargain. Booked on Tui's website direct. Don't book through Skyscanner or any third parties. Go straight to Tui and book the flight direct. So that was £49. My friend David booked the flight a couple of days before as well. And I think he paid £73. So again it wasn't too bad for David as well. Costings will be a wee bit different in this one because some of the hotels I did share with David, but we'll go over that in a wee minute. Flight back with Ryanair was £37, uh, and I came back for Ventura to Edinburgh Airport on this one because it was a lot cheaper and the date suited me better. So, just to recap, return flights to Lanzarote and Ventura were £86 return, which I think is really good value for money. I did pay... 20 euros on the fast ferry to go over to Fort Ventura. We'll include that in the costings at the end, but anyway. Okay, so let's get into the hotels. First hotel was the Blue Bay Lanzarote, all inclusive in Costa Teguise. Now, I booked this for one person for £49 through hotels.com. They had a member's discount and you also collect stamps. So effectively, anything I booked with hotels.com almost take about 10% off because I'll get a free night once I've stayed 10 nights so it always works out cheaper but I did change the booking because at the last minute my friend David decided to come on the trip as well and it was only £25 extra to add David on so it was £74 for all inclusive for two people so £37 each for a one bedroom apartment all you can eat all you can drink I think it was pretty good value for money but there is a couple of things I would say about the hotel. First of all, with hotels.com, 
it was free cancellation up to 24 hours before departure. So just in time, I actually cancelled my original booking and I rebooked it for two people. It was cheaper doing it that way than it was um, adding a person on to the booking. So if you've got free cancellation on any website, always check if the prices come down. Simply cancel your booking and rebook it and sometimes you can save money. A wee tip for you. So the hotel itself, by now you've probably seen the room that myself and David stayed in. The room was absolutely fine, no complaints whatsoever about the room. It was a reasonable three star standard, absolutely fine. We did have a few beers that night in Costa Tegese, so it probably made it a bit easier to sleep in the room, so I can't really give you an accurate description of what it was like really during the night, etc. What I would say about the hotel, there's a couple of negatives about the hotel. In my, just my opinion, because I know I've got some people who have stayed there and really like the hotel. Food's not great. Um, we've seen the breakfast. I had breakfast and we had lunch. And I've and I seen the, the pool bar lunch as well. The food's a pretty low quality, not the best. We didn't make dinner. We ended, out just, we ended up just staying out in a few bars in Costa de Giza. I didn't make it back for dinner. The, the reason we didn't make it back for dinner is the hotel location is not the best there. It's a wee bit out. 10-15 minute walk outside the centre. Would I stay there again? I'm not sure. It's just a slightly more for all inclusive than it is for self-catering and other apartments nearby. So value for money is very good. If you're there with a family and you're not moving out of the hotel much, I can understand completely why people book it. Would I stay there again compared to the accommodation I stayed in the last time, the Oceania Apartments? I much prefer the Oceania Apartments, much better location next to the square at Costa Tegese, which is really nice. So, location wise, the Blue Bay is not the best, food's not the best, the actual accommodation is good, and the value for money is decent. If you're only paying a wee bit more for self catering and you do drink quite a lot during the day and you're not fussy with food, definitely consider it. I'm in two minds whether to stay again. It'd need to be a good deal to take me back there. That's that's my opinion, viewers. Just my honest opinion. Okay, so let's move on. Then we went three nights at the Cinco Plaza Apartments. Daz, if you're watching, not the Cinco Plaza, the Cinco Plaza Apartments. Okay. Um, this was booked through Booking.com. Made a mistake with this one. I could have booked it the day before for £52 a night through a two. I ended up booking it through booking.com on the day. We booked it that morning. Myself and David were out in Costa Tegese. We woke up the next morning. We actually forgot we hadn't booked any accommodation for the next three nights. So I booked it um, kind of last minute. £63 per night. So worked out about £31.50 per person between me and David. Was it worth that? Don't know. I would say it's more in the mid 50s range worth it the apartment was fine myself and David had no complaints about the apartment it was absolutely fine they've got two swimming pools up at the top the ones heated I didn't mention that in the review done walking through the complex so apologies but one of the pools is heated which, which is a big bonus if you're going to Lanzarote or anywhere else in the Canary Islands if swimming is important to you you have to book a hotel or apartments with a heated pool Otherwise, it's going to be too cold most of the time to go in. So, the apartment itself, I liked the location. Although I would say going back at night, there is a wee bit of a hill going back up the way. So, if you've got any mobility issues, I've done videos on other apartments right next to the promenade in Porto del Carmen that might suit you better. Would I stay there again? 100%. I would definitely stay there again. There's quite a lot of nice wee bars around the corner as well on the side streets. We were in a few Bogarts. Uh, there's a bucket list, the spin, is it spin acre, quite a few. Would I stay there again? Yes. Would I try and get a cheaper deal next time? Yes. So that's my thoughts on, on the Cinco Plaza. So next one, unfortunately David had to leave. Uh, enjoy his time in Porto do Carmen, hired a bike for a couple of days, he really enjoyed cycling about as well. I think he quite liked Lanzarote. Maybe come back again next year, if I go back we'll see. Then I went and got the ferry, fast ferry, 20 euros. You'd have seen the video on it. 33 minutes takes you right in to Coraleco in Fort Ventura. Absolutely perfect. 
but I did stay at the K Beach Sun before that and play a blanker. The K Beach Sun was £58, booked on the day with hotels.com. Family complex, average three star, room was very basic. Wasn't that keen in the balcony, it was very, very loud. And I could also see the H10 Lanzarote Princess just across the road that I should have booked for a wee bit more. Complex itself was fine. Didn't like the location, it's too far out. It's a 10 minute walk to the Papagayo Centre for the Harp and the Bikers Bar are, which is fine, but it's up a wee bit of a hill on the way there, and the way back down, it's fine. Would I stay there again for £58? Probably not. I'd pay a wee bit more. There's a lot of nice hotels in Playa Blanca. Just pay a wee bit more and maybe stay in the nicer hotel, a bit better located. That's my thoughts on it. Check out the room, review done anyway, see what you think. So, then we moved over to Fortaventura, got the ferry over, as I said, 20 euros, straight over, fine. Coral Echo, the first night, I booked accommodation, I literally got there, arrived, done a video, I met Rita and Phil, Rita and Phil, thanks so much um, for your kind donation to the channel as well, and lovely to meet you. So I enjoyed the wee beer, Rita and Phil, they were having a wee bit of tapas, right on the seafront at Coral Echo, lovely spot. So, first night was at the Alisos Player Apartments, they're right up the top of Main Street, go past Burger King, turn left, they're down a kind of wee residential street. I made a mistake booking these because they didn't have a reception, I wanted to just leave my bag, crack on and do videos, so I ended up having to phone somebody. It was like a private booking. To be fair, they came really quick within half an hour. Love the lady and their wee girl. And they gave me the keys to the apartment. The apartment had no complaints about it. The apartment was quite nice, actually. Um, and they're in a quiet complex. Would I stay there again? Yes, I would stay there again. But I would make sure that I planned it where I checked in at a certain time where I didn't have to hang about or wait. I do prefer hotels and apartments that have got receptions where I can leave bags and stuff like that as well and I can just pick up my keys quite easily. This is why I don't book that many accommodations through Airbnb because you can never find out exactly where they are until you actually make the booking. So would I stay there again? Yeah I would. But if it's the same price to stay in other accommodation with a hotel and reception I probably would. Bear with me viewers, I've got a wee phone call coming in here. No idea who it's from, so that's not going to answer just now. <laughs> then, the next night, I stayed at the Dunas Club Apartments, where I've stayed before. I booked it through booking.com. It was £56 a night for a studio apartment. I quite like that complex. Location-wise, it's good if you come off the ferry because you literally just walk off round the corner and that's you at the apartments. Is it worth £56? Yeah, Probably is. Would I stay there again? Yes. It's a nice complex. They've got a restaurant attached to it, which is quite nice as well. I had one pint and watched a wee bit of football in there as well before I headed out. So, would I stay there again? Yes. Be aware at night, but on the way back, it can be quite dark at night on the way back. So, just be aware of that. Um, during the day, I didn't really have any problems. So, that was £56. Corey Echo, I met the Nomad Brothers, David and Harry, absolute pleasure to meet you and thanks for your hospitality, they kindly invited me out and they're going out watching the World Cup, um, watching Argentina, a lot of Argentina fans, check out David's video done on his channel, where Argentina fans were celebrating in Corey Echo, when I was in, um, I'll leave a link at the end to uh, David's channel and also to Harry's channel, the Nomad Brothers, Harry, what a brilliant musician. I've seen him in the Rock Island bar. What a fantastic bar. I'm so glad I'm in that bar. The first night I was there, I was quite tired and I was going to head up the road. And David was there with his girlfriend, Izzy. Izzy, lovely to meet you as well. And he says, are you going to stay and just watch a wee bit of the musicians? And I'm so glad I stayed. The music in that bar is brilliant. And then the next night, check out the video, Fairy Tale of New York with Harry and Tazia. Um, absolutely amazing bar. Love that bar. Corey Echo, actually, when I think about it, it's got quite a few of my favourite spots. That Rock Island bar is brilliant. 
the wee beach on the Waikiki beach is a brilliant spot as well. All the bars get music playing, so I really, really enjoy it there. So it's, it's got two of my favourite bits that I've been to recently. Um, I enjoyed my stay there. I did get some complaints. I didn't go down to Coletta de Fust. I'm sorry. I'll go there next time. I was just quite chilled out at Coral Echo, quite enjoying it. Um, so I just stayed there for two days. Also, I'll leave a link at the bottom. I hope you enjoyed the videos with Vince, PH and uh, Dave. I'll leave a link to their channels. Lovely meeting you guys. Check out the videos. Give them a wee subscribe as well. It's absolutely free. So, let's do a recap how much it cost. Flights were £86. The hotels in total were £320. If I split the nights that I stayed there with David, split it into two, it was £320. So in total, for one week, staying in Lanzarote, a variety of accommodations, self-catering and all inclusive, two nights in Fort Ventura. So in total, one week away, the total was £406. I think that's not bad, viewers. Considering I booked a lot of stuff last minute, I moved about, I seen two different Canary Islands, and all the accommodations were acceptable. There wasn't any that were really bad, they were all acceptable, some were nicer than others. Now, the interesting part that I never mentioned is how much money did I spend when I was there? What do you think, viewers? A few people did guess 50 or 60 pounds a day. You're pretty close there. I spent about £350 in total over seven days. So on average, I spent about just under €60, Euros, maybe £50 a day. There were some days I had one or two big meals, main meals. There were some days I only ended up in one. Some nights I was out with a few beers, with a few drinks. There were some nights I took it easy, I didn't really have any beers. So a wee bit of a mix there. So I spent £350, spend the money. The holiday itself... Working holiday, remember, it was £406. So for the week in Lanzarote and Fort Ventura, the total spend was about £756. That was for a week. So it gives you a wee idea on the channel how much it cost to run the channel. Basically, if I do the same week in Tenerife and it costs about the same amount of money, it's costing about £1,500 a month to run the channel. And without you guys supporting it, I couldn't do it. I really, really appreciate all your support so much. Thanks so much. Um, if you're new to the channel, do me a wee favour. Hit the wee subscribe button there. It's absolutely free. If you go down there, hit the wee camera icon on your TV. And it'll probably say, do you want to subscribe? Just click OK. Give it a wee thumbs up. It helps support the channel. Everybody who's donated a wee coffee or through PayPal, thanks. Everything is back into the channel, back into the trips. I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed my week in Lanzarote and Fort Ventura. I love meeting all the other guys who've done the YouTube channels as well. Check them all out below. And no doubt in it, I'll be back next year in Lanzarote and Fort Ventura. I might do separate trips this time. So I might break it up in different trips. I'm not quite sure. It's just so tempting, but when you get to play a blanket and you're only half an hour away from Fort Ventura, it's easy just to head over there, you know, for the day. Anyway. Hope you've enjoyed the wee round up the prices. This video has been longer than expected. I'll see you all soon. And I'll be back in Lanzarote and Fort Ventura probably the end of next year. Thanks for watching guys. See you later.